Hello everybody, the next plane off the pile is a Miller's Falls number 8. Yes, I've broke from the traditional Stanley plane that I normally do videos on and I've gone to a Miller's Falls. Miller's Falls makes a good plane. And by good plane I specifically mean this type of plane right here that has the patented two-piece lever cap. Other than that, this plane is exactly like a Stanley number 3. The later models of the Miller's Falls did away with the frog adjustment screw, which uh, is probably an overhyped capability, but it's on the Stanleys. This one here has got some good bones. Looks like it's not going to take a lot of work to bring it back to life. One of my overseas subscribers asked me specifically to find him this plane. There it is. I found it. Now I'm going to get it ready. Let's break it down. It sure is nice to break a plane down and not have to use a torch. All the parts are there. All the parts look good. The biggest thing I see is some previous owner carved that beautiful letter A into the side of the tote. The tote knob from the Miller's Falls planes are hardwood, not rosewood. So redoing that finish is a difficult thing to do. I try to uh, restore them and not strip them. So the first thing on the to-do list for is to scrub it and rinse it. With the scrubbing done I can confirm the japanning on the bottom looks really good. There's a couple chips missing here and there that I can fix with my touch up marker. And the red on the frog also looks really good. You can see when it was put on there wasn't a whole lot of attention to detail as far as where it was applied. And it's not a very thick coat. So right there where the frog adjustment attaches you see there's some red paint. The machine surface on the bottom side you see a little bit of red paint and the same thing with the machine surface on the top. So when I clean this stuff up I'm going to make sure I leave that original paint where they slopped it. Next I'm going to use one of my scrapers on all these flat metal surfaces. Not a lot to do, a little bit of surface rust here and there. I'm going to initially take it off of that scraper. I did a video on how to make these scrapers, they're a handy little tool. You always want to be scraping in the direction of the machine marks. With the scraping done, there's something I want to show you that's different between the Miller's Falls and Stanley Plains, at least from my experience. It might be hard to see, but you can see where the scraper hit and where it didn't hit on the machine size of that plane. It's clear that it wasn't machined flat. You got a high spot on, on both the top of the cheek and the bottom, and in between it's low. It's probably a lot less than what it looks like but what I'm going to do because there's also some pitting looks to be very shallow on the front of the side right there I'm going to go ahead and lap it but you got to be real careful when you do that because you don't want to remove the, the markings on the side 150 grit paper elbow grease and frequent checks that's what it's going to take to get this right so it took about 10 minutes worth of lapping and I'd say the uh, bottom of the plane looks pretty good. The pitting that was on that front is not completely gone, but you don't want to remove any more metal than what I did. You could, but then you sacrifice possibly losing the marking on the side. The bottom came out really nice. It also had some uh, shallow pitting up there by the throat, mostly on as we're looking at it, the right hand side left if it's sitting right side up and the right cheek it came out to look really good I went around the edges with the 150 grit paper and what I'm talking about are these edges right here the front and across the top edge so that's looking good the only thing I got to do is the machine surface of the frog sits so the machine surfaces of the, where the frog mounts here and up front here near the throat I'm going to clean up with my sanding stick steel wool and that wire brush and fast forwarding with that done it's on the frog. Now I want to keep the uh, slopped over paint so I'm going to use on the frog itself a worn out sanding sponge, some steel wool, the lateral adjustment lever is going to be my sanding stick and then I'll take it over to my grinding wheel to finish it up. And as you can see that worked great on the frog. I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to use steel wool on it like I do on regular japanning. Next thing for the frog is going to be the dirty oil. But first I got to go back over here to the bottom and do a little more work. I am going to do a light 4 aught steel wooling of the Japani, but I'm going to focus on the chips that are here 
and the chips near the front. And other than that, it's light everywhere else because I'm going to use some uh, touch up on those chips. And with the steel wool done, you can see that it did slightly dull the japanning, but that's going to come back. If you've watched my videos before, you'll see how that magic works. Now the chips are ready to be touched up. I touch up the chips primarily in order to prevent the japanning from even chipping off more than what it already is. What I use are Sharpie oil pens or oil markers. I buy them at Home Depot. You can buy them all over the place. I, you can buy them off eBay. I checked. But it's a Sharpie oil based marker. You can get all kinds of colors. If I needed red for that frog, I think I've got a red one somewhere. So now it's on to doing the touch up. Each spot is going to take uh, several coats. Got to let them dry in between. Otherwise it just wipes the first one off. But it's not going to make them disappear completely. They'll be less noticeable. And most importantly, it's going to hopefully prevent them from flaking off further. To achieve the best results you want to have a good light. You want to put on your reading glasses if you're old like me and only put it on the bare spot. You start overlapping the other japanning and it becomes harder to blend it in. Now it's time to work on the toad knob. I mentioned earlier that this is a hard finish to replicate. So I'm not going to try to replicate. I'm going to try to uh, touch up. First step in doing that is to use my sanding sponge and some steel wool. I need to do some finesse sanding. I'm going to sand the overall finish to prep it for another coat of lacquer and to clean it at the same time, remove scratches in the finish but not remove it. I'm going to do that all over the entire thing and try to feather the chips that are missing as much as I can while I'm doing it. So the light sanding and the steel wool has them looking better already but as you can see there's a little ways to go. The original finish is still there, got some touch up to do. So the next step, just like my japanning trick, they make something that's handy to help with this. So this is a pen like my japanning pen. There's what it is. It says wood finish stain markers. This one is red mahogany which works really good for uh, these, this color toad and knob. So after applying the stain in spots, wherever the finish was uh, removed and the later wood was showing through. Next step I'm going to take some steel wool and even it up. And look at the difference it made already. Next step is to put the finish on. I'll be applying multiple coats of Minwax Satin Spray Lacquer. Lacquer is what was, was originally used on the tote knob. I normally do three thin coats and then sand in between and then repeat until I'm happy with the way it looks. I've sandblasted the back side of the lever cap and the front I didn't do that because it retains a lot of the original red around the Miller's Falls logo. What it doesn't have is the original nickel plating that used to be there. The uh, pitting that you see, don't know how thick it is, I'm going to try to lap it out. The lapping will be done on 150 grit sandpaper. I'm very pleased with the 150 grit lapping. I'm going to move on and do the back side over on my wire wheel before I do the finish on the front. And with the back side done, it's hard to see, but it has patent applied for. That means this is an early one of the Miller's Falls with the, the uh, two piece lever cap. That uh, shiny back side is going to tone down once I put my dirty oil on it. I'm going to finish the front side with some really fine grit paper 1,000, 3,000, maybe some 5,000 and that'll make it look like it's got nickel plate on it again. And here's how the lever cap looks after some sanding. I didn't use the buffing wheel, I just stopped at the 7000 grit paper. I'd say she looks pretty good. And while the lever cap was being worked on, I put three coats of spray lacquer on the tote knob. I just sanded them with the sanding sponge. I'm going to hit them with three or four, either three or four out steel wool and then three more coats of lacquer and we'll see how they look. Next on the list is the iron and the iron cap. The tools for that, 150 grit paper on the sanding block, my uh, sanding sponge, sanding stick, and over here is the lapping station. may have to take the parts over there and do it. I've done a detailed video on how to restore both of these parts. Every part that we're looking at today, there's detailed videos. I can't get it all into 15 minutes, which is the time I try to limit to for any plain restoration video. I'm going to do these inside edges with the sanding stick 
and a rolled up piece of sandpaper. I'm going to hit the outside edges. I can do it with my sanding block or on my lapping station, whichever works best at the time. Either one will work just fine. I'm going to hit the flat surfaces with the sanding block, see if they clean up well. If not, they go over to the lapping station. So the iron and the iron cap came out nice. A little bit of pitting up near the top side. But all in all, given the condition it was in, it looks really good. And the tote knob. Holy cow, look at that. You never know those are the same things. Even the scarlet letter A doesn't look quite as bad as what it originally did. And now it's time to unleash my dirty oil rag on all these metal parts. I finished with the touch up on the bottom. Probably about four on the front little nicks right there. And after it's done they'll look even better. So there's all these parts. Every nook and cranny, dirty oil. So I've applied my dirty oil and would you believe I forgot to sharpen the iron first. So I gotta wipe that off and sharpen the iron. And with the iron sharpened, it's on to the small parts. And for that I'll be using a folded piece of sandpaper in the screw slots, a portion of the sanding sponge and the depth adjustment knob and the wire wheel and everything else. And after cleaning up the small parts, I give them a good coating of rim oil. I like the way the rim oil darkens them up a little bit. They don't look quite as shiny and new. And now it's time to wipe the dirty oil off of all those parts and give everything a coat of wax. I've wiped off the oil and waxed all the parts and everything looks great. This old number 8 is going to look good when I get her put back together. And isn't she a beauty? Look at that old number 8. Cleaned up well. We'll take a look at her from every angle. There's not a whole lot left to do on this one, but admire how good it looks. And of course, I'm going to have to take her for a test drive. I have a piece of 1 and 5 8 inch popular in the vise. We're going to see what the old number 8 can do. She's looking good. Shavings are just blowing up out of the throat. Look at that. I like it. Not only does this plane look good, but it works really good. Another one passes the test. The old number 8 produced some really fine shavings. When I started this video, I mentioned that this is exactly the same as a Stanley number 3, and it is. It's a great performer. And it's a good looking plane. I like the colors that Miller's Falls used. Overall it's pretty and functional. Miller's Falls made a complete line of planes identical to the Stanley's. They're a great plane to collect and a great plane to use. And they normally don't cost as much as what a Stanley does. So this old Miller's Falls number 8 came out really good. If you like the video and the techniques that I use, please give me a thumbs up and I always enjoy your comments. That's it for today. It's time for supper. Bye.